So just this past weekend, I went to see the Phantom of the Opera at the Princess of Wales Theatre in Toronto. And uh, I thought rather than just give a straight review that I would just compare it to the uh, sort of original Toronto production back in like nine, I saw it in 1991, I believe it was, at the Pantages Theater. That's the program from the Pantages from the 90s, and this is the program from uh, from just this week. So maybe I'll just talk about the uh, the actual show itself. I've seen the original movie with uh, Lon Chaney in it and uh, I don't really remember it that well but when you see this show you kind of think back of how they bring it to the stage and um, well the production itself I guess began in London back previous to the 90s I suppose I'm not sure exactly when it doesn't really matter it started in London and uh, it was quite successful. And what happened was the Pantages Theater, part of it used to be a, a cineplex, like for, for a movie theater. Apparently a couple of the owners of the cineplex theater, they somehow bought the Pantages Theater and they did a big reno on it and uh, sort of restored it. It was one of those things where they restored it back to its original glory and in a nutshell what they did is they brought the rights to the Phantom of the Opera for Canada and they brought the Phantom of the Opera to the Pantages Theatre as the, the, the first production of this new thing and the company that did it was called the Live Entertainment Corporation of Canada which eventually became called as Live Event I believe and they could probably do a whole opera on this live entertainment corporation of Canada with what happened to them in the years after this 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 enterprise but they successfully brought uh, the, the Phantom of the Opera to Canada they customized the production to the theater which means that they uh, a lot of the effects and everything were just built into the theater as opposed to the more recent show I saw, which is a road show. A lot of the technical stuff in the show were customized, and they, the show played for years in the Pantages. Where the boat's going and all these candles and candelabras come up from under the stage, that sort of thing. That was all part of the customization they did to the stage. I guess all these things came out of the floor. I don't really remember, but you could have taken a tour of the theater and, and seen how they did all this stuff. The production in the 90s that I saw, I saw it twice. It was amazing and it, and it was very groundbreaking and so on and so forth. The movement of the boat, for instance, on the lake was uh, all computerized somehow. I think it was radio controlled. And what they did with the show, they had Calm Wilkinson played the Phantom. And Calm Wilkinson is, is amazing. And I saw two shows and he was there for both of them. And Christine was played by Rebecca Kane. Both times I saw it, it was right on point. There was a few differences, including the very ending. The very ending in here was much different than the ending here. Yeah, so the Pantages Theater was the customized production. Everything was built for that theater. So you were going to the theater, which was all done up and restored, and like you could, it's just a, an incredible space. There's sort of like a lobby area that's just as amazing as the theater itself. It's just very grand. But this is an actual road show, which they, I guess, arrives in trucks and they haul it in the back door and and set it up and when they're done they can take it all down put it back into trucks and move it along so the the bottom line on this production is the staging is a lot more scaled down or a lot more simplistic not to say that it wasn't impressive but they just couldn't do as much stuff as they did at the Pantages as they did for this one and um, a little bit about the actual 
Paris Opera House, and it's all written in these programs. Apparently, the Paris Opera House is the Opera House, and below it, there's several floors. Right underneath it, there's an entire lake <laughs> underneath the theater, and they use apparently they use maybe they use the water for ballast or something like this. It's helpful to understand that when uh, you see how. Where, where are these? Where are they going? They, where's the Phantom taking Christine? Like they, they're going way down below, underneath the Opera House, um, to this underground lake, and uh, she, he takes her somewhere off to his lair. And uh, another helpful thing was that I found because there's a lot of things in these programs that nobody bothers to read, but they do tell you a lot. On the album here. The original album, well, the album from the 90s, which featured Carl Mokotson and uh, Rebecca King. Inside the album, it tells you, it goes, it gives you the rundown of the whole show and tells you what's going on. Because really, if you don't know the show, you kind of, you can kind of get lost because there's a lot of stuff going on. And uh, one of the things that I thought is lacking is the actual who is the Phantom. In the movie, it's a bit different, I'm not sure, because there's, there's three or four different movies that all say different things, but the Phantom was, was disfigured somehow and ended up living under the Opera House. And in, in here, since I read this, uh, it says that the Phantom is some kind of, was in some kind of a freak show uh, in a circus or something like this, and he um, somehow got disfigured and ended up under the opera house. But the whole thing with the phantom is the phantom seems to magically be unable to be caught, so he must have some kind of skill. He's all over this opera house, I guess he knows it well, but he can't get caught, nobody catches him and everybody's afraid of him. And he sends all these notes and so on and so forth to control what's going on. They don't really elaborate too much on that, they just they just assume a lot. But that's the nature of, of live theater, I guess. They show you little things and they dazzle you and so on and so forth. There's a couple of big differences between the 90s version and the road show. And in the in the 90s version that I saw, now spoiler alert, but I assume you already know this, in the 90s version, the chandelier, which was hung above the crowd where it is on both of them, crashes into the stage. Like, it, it goes right across into the stage. Whereas in this production, it just drops down. It's, it's like hanging in the middle of the theater and it just drops down. And uh, that's a big difference because we were sitting in row FF, so to see that, you had to sort of look back up, right? The chandelier for this show was way over here, was in the middle of the crowd. It didn't sort of relate to the stage, so you didn't really understand how it happened. But in this one, <clears throat> it went from the way up there right down into the stage, and believe me, that is one scary thing when that came down. It was nobody, I had no idea that was gonna happen. And I was sitting with a bunch of, with some elderly relatives at the time and I'm, I was going, holy shit. The next thing uh, that I find is a bit glaring was the masquerade part. And I sort of understand why they did this, but in the, in the Pantages version, they had this gorgeous staircase this like sort of staircase that sort of wound down and a lot of it a lot of the the the, the performance was on that state on the staircase and I think I don't know for sure but I'm pretty sure that the Phantom came down the stairs in the version I saw on Saturday in the road show they had this sort of um, I don't know this sort of set very like Versailles sort of set with this round sort of thing at the top with like mirrors or whatever and everything was on level ground where I was sitting anyway you just pretty much saw this mass of maybe 30 people sort of somewhat dressed up 
and the phantom appeared behind, out of a door in behind. I don't remember if that's how they did it in the 90s. And the phantom was dressed up in this wild costume. I don't remember this one, the phantom being, he was just dressed up like the phantom maybe. But uh, I don't remember. But he was supposed to be dressed in this red, wild, sort of devilish kind of costume. So there was uh, the chandelier, there was the masquerade, and then there was the boat when he takes Christine to his secret lair or whatever. He brings her down down into the bottom of the, 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 the opera house to where the water is and they get in this little boat and they go sort of sailing along. In this one they did this like really wide thing where the candelabras and everything came out of the bottom of the stage. In this one, well, they came down, the, the, this is quite kind of cool, there was like this sort of, I don't know, this sort of concrete looking wall and they sort of worked their way down this wall and these stairs sort of came out of the wall, which was kind of cool. Although it was really high and I was, I was a little concerned that maybe the the girl playing Christine would trip on her dress and like that would have been a bit of a disaster. But anyway, they, they did make it down there and they used that a couple of times. But and then they went into a boat and the boat just sort of sailed, the boat just sort of moved around in front of this thing and that was it for the boat. And then they ended up at, at, the, at the Phantom's Lair. So there's those three th differences that you know it's understandable because this version is has to fit into a truck and go somewhere else and the other one sort of is there permanently so there was one more thing uh calm wilkinson <clears throat> start in this version but when we arrived at this show the phantom was to be played by derek davis and he's in all the posters and all the promo and he did all the interviews and everything and and I was a bit excited to see but when we arrived for this there was a note at this performance the role of the Phantom of the Opera will be played by Travis Taylor right so so they had an understudy doing the Phantom which, uh, which kind of bothered me because, well, there was one more show. They were doing, the Sunday was the last show, I guess, I guess they're, that's it, or whatever, I don't know. But the Sunday was the last show. We're there the Saturday night. Saturday night's usually a big night. Why would you take the star off and put in an understudy? And I don't know how much, I don't know how much time they would give an understudy to get ready to to be the main performer, I, 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 I don't know. It's a bit of a disappointment. I'll never know how good Derek Davis was as the Phantom, but such is life. But I will say this, okay? The Phantom of the Opera, you'd think is about the Phantom, and it is sort of about this Phantom of the Opera, but really, it's about Christine. And the Phantom has a lot of singing. There's a lot of singing going on, but the most singing, the most demanding role for for the Phantom of the Opera is Christine. When you look at a, a show like this that's actually built into the theater, as opposed to this, which has to eventually go into a truck and move somewhere else, um, the production will be lesser. But I think that the magic of The Phantom was, wasn't all the production, it's all the old school stuff. It's all the old school effects and old school makeup and so on. But um, yeah. So that's that's my comparison between the two eras of uh, The Phantom and uh, well maybe you know maybe we'll give it another 20 years and go check it out again. Who knows, maybe then I'll be living under the Opera House scaring people. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll talk again soon.